Well, good morning, everybody. I think it's uh, really important that we reach out to the donors to the Coast History East Hands Health Centre Foundation who helped uh, manage our COVID unit during the early days of the pandemic crisis. One of the important things is to understand the team that we had behind it. And, and these group of wonderful nurses are a small smattering of those who stepped up to be a part of the early days and continuing days of, of the COVID pandemic and our response to it. I want everybody to know that your support as community members via your donations and your food and uh, the signs that showed up for all of us really made it much easier for us to come to work every day even though of course as you all know in the early days we really had not a great idea of what we were dealing with. It was a deadly illness that none of us had faced before and again from my perspective knowing that we had a group of nurses who stepped up and who said yes we can do this made it much easier to come to work every day and, and in conjunction with your support. Uh, that continued and does continue. We've really uh, become much closer as healthcare mm -hmm. providers and knowing each other and really creating this family type of atmosphere that really cares about each other um, is the strength that, that really got us through this. So a community within a community. One of the things that I would say that that we've all talked about is, is the simplicity of the uh, equipment that we had in the early days um, which uh, is evidenced here on the, the tabletop. Um, the biggest indicator that we had from a vital signs perspective um, was checking people's oxygen saturations. Yeah. <laughs> um, and of course we were unfortunately ill prepared to do that, um, which really created a, a struggle for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say, and, and I'm sure you guys would echo that, that it was much easier for us as physicians because we didn't need to spend much time with patients uh, day in, day out, because our treatments at that time were exceedingly limited. Um, you know, as nursing staff, um, I don't know, Jill, if you want to talk about what, you know, what you're experiencing was in the early days of nursing patients with COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't really know anything. We were kind of flying by the seat of our pants, and every day there was new information coming. Right, and tons of it, right? Yeah. Right. And the day before, what we were told may be completely swept under the rug and we're not to do that anymore. So it was really hard to kind of keep up with all of that information. And then on top of it, the equipment that we did have wasn't super useful to us. We, you know, we would have to go into the patient's room so much more frequently than maybe necessary um, to continue to monitor them, monitor them properly. Um, and so it was definitely, it was risky. We felt like it was really scary because we constantly were going into that room, you know, changing out our PPE and, you know, we, we didn't really know what was going on and what to expect in the long term. So. And then of course we talked about not having enough PPE at one point yeah. as well, right? Which thankfully didn't uh, actually uh, come to fruition, but that was a real concern for all of us at one point. The risk of running yeah. out. The risk well, of running out. It was very real. I mean, we were listening yeah. to reports about other places that were running out really Absolutely. low and yeah. reusing N95s. And yes. yeah. it was just, it was a really big concern for us, yes. yeah. And then it made us even more kind of nervous because we would think, well, do we really need to go in? You know, can we gather everything we may possibly need in this one time and go in with all of it? And, you know, that's not how we normally do care. You know, we're going in and out of those rooms like 20 times an hour sometimes, depending on the patient. And, you know, if we need something, we call out and somebody comes in and brings us something that we need. And, you know, in these types of patients, that wasn't the best practice and the best way to do things. So, yeah, certainly helped our teamwork. It yeah, sure did. We, did. we did checklists together of the, what all do we need to go into this room and yeah. do you have everything and no, wait a second, let me go grab this for you. Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel that that has actually like continued Absolutely. even after that first wave, second wave. Yeah. You know, we're still such a community and such a team here. And you know, I feel so much closer to all of my team members and the docs. Like, I feel really comfortable to go to them when I need something, so. Yeah, it's definitely impacted us like our whole career now, you know, from Absolutely. here on out. So, well, I think yeah. the other the other part of that is that we all felt empowered to do 
our jobs and, and, and different jobs. Mm -hmm. you, know, right? you know, I can remember going into the room and, and um, you know, generally speaking, I would go in with myself and a stethoscope to, to a patient's room, but I can remember you, I mean, all of you nurses would say, hey doc, you know, they need this, they need that, can you bring this in and make sure that's there for the next time? And, and, and it just made sense. Absolutely. Right? It, it was, the, it was the, the right way to do business and is the right way to do business. <laughs> Uh, so from that perspective, that, as you said, Joe, that's invaluable stuff. To yeah, to wear a few yeah. new hats. Yes, yeah. <laughs> a few different things that he <laughs> hasn't done before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think the other thing to really point out, and I'm sitting here at our main uh, COVID room because it's a negative pressure room in front of me, and the other important part of that is it now has a window in the door, uh, mm -hmm. but prior to that, all the doors were solid wood. So not only uh, was it important to try to understand what their oxygen saturations were, uh, but you were trying to do that through a solid wood door that was mostly closed. Mm. Very, very difficult to do. Oh my goodness. Impossible. Yes. Yeah, impossible. It was impossible. You could not keep your an eye on the patient without actually going in and opening the door. And, so. and some of these people obviously were very, very sick. Mm -hmm. very uh, sick. So, so that had to change. Mm -hmm. And I think the the... Obviously, the, the greatest thing that we've seen different is the introduction of our new monitoring system here, which we're still able to use today, mm -hmm. um, which, will, which really becomes a legacy project uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that someday when we turn this into an intermediate intensive care unit, then those, uh, those monitors will still be used. Mm -hmm. And we can still use them now on patients who need them. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, that continues to be a, a great asset that we have. Uh, and to reach out to the foundation to make this happen was effortless. Um, people might not always understand that. Sometimes dealing with governments, I know the foundation is not the government, but sometimes dealing with governments we get stuck in our thoughts that everything's a bureaucratic process that takes mm -hmm. a long, long time to happen, multiple proposals. And, and from my perspective, once we approach the foundation to say, Hey, we need a we need a different system here. This isn't working. Mm -hmm. um, the the next thing we knew, the funding was there to do it uh, without question, and um, that was just an unbelievably bright light for all of us and a big mm -hmm. sigh of relief. Absolutely. And I think you know, from a funding perspective, um, as we've talked about, the other important thing is this came from a generalized pot of money in the sense that it, the money wasn't earmarked for anything and those are the type of donations during these unknown times that are really really important as well um, because of that if money is earmarked for a new ultrasound machine which is also essential you can't use it for these projects that come up that are unexpected yeah, yeah absolutely uh, but but absolutely essential uh, so that makes it really, really important that we have money earmarked for projects, but also for things that are unknown in the future. Mm -hmm. And we all <laughs> hope that we're not going to see more unknowns. Things that we haven't planned for. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that, I mean, it, it, it shows us that we need to be ready for, because we are a global community now, we yeah. need to be ready right. for things that just cross borders. Yeah. There, mm -hmm. are, There's no way of stopping it sometimes. So. Right. That's well said. Things that we haven't thought of and things that are elsewhere that now come to Canada. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so from a community perspective, we really appreciate your support, both, both through uh, feeding us, of course, and your, your <laughs> undying support uh, as it continues, financial support to fund projects like this. Um, how can you continue to support us? Very simply, wear your mask, mm -hmm. wash your hands. hands monitor your symptoms, get tested. Absolutely. Stay home if you're sick. Amen to that. And keep your bubble. Yeah, yeah, stay within point. your bubble. Mm -hmm. Well said.